It's cool to see how car culture has become so intertwined with internet culture that our terms have now escaped our community and took life within other communities. So here are five car terms that went mainstream. Sleeper build. This term's origin is theorized to be referencing sleeper agents during the early Cold War era right after World War II. Much like how a sleeper agent is meant to be an unassuming person who is actually significantly more capable than their appearance lets on, a sleeper car is meant to be a very unsuspecting car, very normal looking car that is actually far more capable capable than it seems. Basically, it's what your mama told you as a kid. It's not what's on the outside that counts, it's what's on the inside, because sleeper cars tend to have very grocery getter, normal looking, commuter looking car style. Some people take an extra step further and make their cars look like beaters and total completely junked up cars and rusty crap boxes, but secretly swap very powerful, capable engines and even going out of their way to even boost the cars or even add nitrous to these sleeper cars. Basically, it's a way of doing something while being more humble about it. People who own sleeper cars tend not to be as brag worthy, as showboaty as someone with a flashy tuner car or someone who just has a flashy cosmetic modded ricer. In that same vein, people have started to use sleeper in other communities such as the fitness community as well as the gaming PC community where you'll constantly see people in fitness videos like bro was built like a sleeper or bro was rocking that new sleeper build. And it's funny to see that community call it like a new term when in actuality the car community has been using this as early as, you know, the Cold War era, so the 50s, 60s. So I think we've been using it before that, but I'll actually talk about the term for that. Before someone mentions souped up, I'll, I'll talk about that in the next entry. But so sleeper cars, because of how memorable and how easy it is of a concept to understand, even for non-car people, like it's kind of like sleeper builds in the fitness community is someone who doesn't really look like a super big gym bro, gym cell kind of type of guy. But then the moment they take their shirt off, you're like, whoa, this dude is big. It's basically like watching a minivan with a family of seven secretly gap like a Ferrari. In terms of gaming PCs, it's even more unique. So I see a lot of people like where it's a trend on shorts and TikTok where they'll find like an old office looking computer. And those are very hard to modify because they usually have their parts welded into them. So you actually have to be very skilled and very careful when it comes to removing the old parts, putting new parts in and actually making the new parts work. Gaming PCs have that RGB, the big old glass display cases, sometimes even multiple, all the fans, sometimes Sometimes even liquid cooling, beautiful glass tubing, chrome joints and whatever, where you see people go all this effort to make radiators and liquid cooling systems and colored fluid. And like, again, it's a lot of passion and that's why people want their passion and their work to be shown, which is why it's absolutely respectable that the sleeper trend even caught any attention in the gaming PC community. Because at the end of the day, a sleeper car can still be used on the street to troll people, but a sleeper gaming PC isn't really known by anyone other than you and maybe a small group of friends because again it's not super shareable on social media and again it's not as memorable because think about it you don't really take your gaming pc out of the house that much so it being a sleeper isn't super beneficial whereas so that's why i kind of respect gamers for making sleeper build gaming pcs because it takes the same it takes a similar effort just like with making sleeper cars you have to be knowledgeable with the machine you have to know what you're doing you're going to take a lot of risk you might make a lot of mistakes and, and at the end of the day they're really Really just doing it for themselves. They're like, I just want a very boring looking computer that is really capable on the inside. Because I get that some people genuinely might not just like RGB, super duper bright lighting, tons of fans or liquid cooling and you know, all this routing and all this cable work and blah, 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 blah. Some people just want to put it behind a very unassuming case and not have anyone really pay much attention to it. And I can, I can respect that. I can respect kind of the nonchalant dominance that comes with that feel. So bone stock is the complete opposite of the previous term we just discussed. It refers to leaving a car completely unmodified. Basically, it's factory condition, it's original equipment manufacturer condition, or OEM, or bone stock, as we like to say. There's nothing inherently wrong with this term. It is not an insult. Please do not interpret it as one. However, I would also like to point out that it's not really used as a compliment either. Bone stock functions more like an adjective. It's just a term that we use to describe something that is completely unmodified. Example, yo, did you hear Kyle? Just got a Mustang. Yo, what exhaust does he have on it? Nothing yet. It's still bone stock. 
Having said that, this term has mostly found its way into the tech community, where it continues to hold the same exact meaning. It's actually surprising for me to hear Linus Tech Tips, Marquise Brownlee, and several other tech YouTubers use the term bone stock rather frequently when reviewing all kinds of tech products these days. Nowadays, whenever I see a lot of tech YouTubers introduce a product, they would mention if it was worth using that product in its bone stock configuration, or if it was better off being altered. They will also use it again as just a describing term, like, hey, I just un I just opened this straight out the box. This item right now is totally bone stock, basically letting you know that the condition of the product they're showing you in is exactly how you would experience it if you got the same product directly from factory. So they're using the term exactly as how car guys used it. And it's super funny because like even in the car community, the term is still relatively new because I remember when I first made this channel in 2017, you can still go back to my old car guys dictionary series and still see people comment like, why do you talk about bone stock so much? Like, like what does like chicken broth have anything to do with this conversation? But at the end of the day, it still shocks me how even then, because like bone stock and stock was used like in Midnight Club, Fast and Furious, and even Need for Speed games in the early 2000s. So it kind of shocked me how even in the mid 2010s, there were still people who had never heard of bone stock before even within the car cuny so it's cool to see that more car guys use it and now other cunies have started to use it because it's just a really fun way of saying something as just being completely unmodified could we just say unmodified product sure is that as catchy obviously not which is why we invented bone stock clapped out originally used to refer to high mileage very old or super worn out looking vehicles clapped out has become a more umbrella term in the modern car cuny as it generally now just refers to a poorly maintained car or a abused car for example if a teenager buys a miata ruins its paint job, makes all the panels mismatch, blows its engines up, and then lists it on Facebook Marketplace expecting seven grand despite the fact that the car doesn't even turn on, you would give them a reality check by sending a DM that says, that clapped out piece of junk ain't worth that much, I'll give you $500. And you'd be surprised when delusional mofos still think their clapped out pieces of junk are worth anything. The definition of clapped out for cars has evolved very quickly within the past decade already where a lot of people don't really use it for old cars or high mileage cars because they're not necessarily always clapped out. For example, a Camry with 300,000 miles that was loved by its owner will look a lot better than a Civic with just 60,000 miles that's owned by an irresponsible moron. It really just depends on who owns it, whether they abuse the car, whether they love and maintain the car because the mileage isn't the full story. Same thing kind of applies with old cars. Yes, years tend to wear down cars more, but I've seen 1965 Mustangs, which are older than basically the majority of people watching this video, but they can still look better than cars that are only three years old. Again, if the owner completely abuses that car, hates it, doesn't take care of it, you'll, there'll literally be a car that's 50 years older that looks better than it. So most people don't really use clapped out to describe high mileage or classic cars anymore because we tend to have more respect for classic cars now. And I'm glad because it has now gotten to the point where people outside the car community heard us say it and are just like, yo, that house looks so clapped out. Or even when they're at a restaurant to be like, yo, is that what you ordered? Bro, that looks so clapped, dude. Anything that looks super worn out or abused by the owner, be it torn clothes, poorly maintained houses, poorly prepared meals, water damaged phones, basically anything can look clapped out. And people outside the car community just say it because it's just something funny to say. It's really easy to say. It catches on very well. It has a good ring to it. Like, yo, bro, what's with that phone? That looks clapped out, man. If they have like a cracked screen, if it's been dropped multiple times, and if it like, when part of its screen like flickers and doesn't even function well, like you would just call it clapped out. And like, I'm I'm very glad that the term has not only evolved to a very de facto definition in the car cuny, but that that definition also applies very easily outside of the car cuny. On to the final term of this video that went mainstream outside the car cuny. We're talking base model, base trim, low spec, and my favorite, poverty spec. So all these more or less refer to the same thing. And people basically use this to refer to entry level items or trims, or whether it's a car or something in the tech industry. To be fair, base model did not originate from the car community. It was always a term used to describe the cheapest, lowest option item in a series of items. For example, the base model washing machine in a catalog, the base model laptop, a base model phone, and so on and so forth. So they've always used it in the tech sector, more or less alongside the usage of it in cars. Base trim, like the word trim in general, it usually is more of a car cuny thing where you describe it as like, what trim car did you get? I don't really hear many people say, what trim phone did you get? They'd be like, they would, because they would look at you and take it literally and be like, like, what do you mean what trim do I have around my phone? Like, they literally think you mean like trimming, like gold trimming, like armor trimming and runescape, like black gold or rune gold or something. Like, they don't actually 
interpret it as like the series or specifications, which is why car guys will further specify because this one is definitely a car community thing when you call something poverty spec. <laughs> so this is the first time I heard this phrase was from F spot. And to be fair, it's still not super popularly used outside of the car community because understandably it's very offensive, but it doesn't. I can't help but laugh as someone who knows the origin of it. So I never really saw it as a super offensive term because in the car community, it was more of a joking term. Basically, it specifically referred to an expensive car, believe it or not, that was bought in its lowest trim. Therefore, it's poverty spec. For example, F Spot would point at a C7 Corvette Stingray and be like, you didn't get the Z06, that's poverty spec. He would look at a base model Lamborghini Huracan and be like, didn't get the Huracan Evo. He just got a regular Huracan. That's poverty spec. He's using it in a joking tone because obviously nothing about a Huracan or Corvette is poverty at all. Those are both very expensive cars still. He very obviously uses it in a joking tone and within the car community we, it started off as joking at first from like 2017-ish to like early uh, pandemic where we would look at like base model Lamborghini Gallardos or base model Ferrari 360s and be like yo that's the poverty spec car but it's funny to see like outside the car community when people take this term they use it very viscerally and very brutally where they look at a friend and go, do you have the lowest level iPhone? And instead of calling it base model, they'll be like, yeah, it's so poverty spec. Like I said, I'm laughing because I know the origin of the term originally wasn't meant to have fed people, but seeing that people will basically demonize everything these days, there is a little bit of humor coming from someone who watches a term go from a somewhat benign inside joke, because it was an inside joke in the car community, to now watching people like on TikTok or on YouTube shorts use the term to actually offend other people, and then watching people actually get triggered by it. Like, how dare you call my gaming beat? Easy poverty spec. Oh, you got the NVIDIA 4060? Why not the 4080? You got the poverty spec GPU. <laughs> like, oh my God. Anyways, that's gonna be it for this video. If you had fun, if you had a good laugh, make sure to like this video. Make sure to share it for your friends and to all your non-car normies who probably also use some of these terms. If you love automotive content, make sure to subscribe. Check out my shorts if you haven't. Other than that, see y'all next time. Blade Angel out.